I think we're live. It's flashing back and forth there. Good evening. I'm Reverend Steve Blake, and this is our midweek Bible study, and I'm the interim pastor at the Second Baptist Church in St. Paul. So we are in the book of Micah, if you want to be turning there. Um, so like I say, um, as you're doing that, I want to get through the announcements and the prayer requests. Um, this Sunday, um, we will do the Thanksgiving offering walk down. Um, so like I say, um, when we're doing this, like I say, there's no envelopes for it. Just mark your gifts. If you write a check, that's the Thanksgiving offering. Um, when we bring it, when you walk down, um, into that. Uh, so like I say, Sunday morning, Thanksgiving offering, walk down, um, Sunday school, 9 a.m. And then 10 a.m. is our Sunday morning service. And we'll transmit over 87.9 for those who are using the parking lot option, which is fine. No problem there. Um, we'll also try to get out on Facebook. Do not know what happened this Sunday on Facebook, but I clicked go live and it just sat there in hourglass the entire time I spoke. It never went live. Um, so the devil was in the devil was in my was in the computer Sunday morning. He did not want that message getting out. Um, Christmas shoe boxes, we collected them this past Sunday. Um, there's a few stragglers coming in during the week here. Um like I say, they have to be taken down to the collection center this week, so we will not be collecting any more any of the services. Um, if you have something, you need to get it to Tommy, get it to him real quick, because I'm not sure what day this week they're taking them. Um, so like I say, um, as of Sunday morning when we left, we had over 200, I think, or Sunday evening. I think there was over 200 and still more stuff coming in. So it should be another good year. Um, the community Thanksgiving service is will be held November 20th at the First Baptist Church that evening, um, and we'll be moving our services there. So th community Thanksgiving service, um, we'll be moving our services there on Sunday evening, and Pat Hash will be the speaker. On the table um, in front of the church, if you haven't got one yet, is our Christmas card list. Uh, make sure you add um, at the bottom Jennifer and Matthew Ward. Um, so, like I say, as we're trying to get everybody's names, and occasionally we miss one or whatever. If we know somebody else is supposed to be on this list, just let us know and we'll get it and I'll announce it. Um, but also remember when you turn in your cards, keep them in this order. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever played 52 card pickup and tried to put the, pick the deck up in order as you're picking it up. That's about what it's like when people turn in things and just turn in stacks that are not in any kind of order. Um, so like I say, we'll just turn them in as you're addressing cards, keep them in this order, and in that way they'll be able to sort them easily. Um, so if you will, bless those people that are working on getting those distributed to everybody by putting those in in order. And those are due December 4th. Um, then also remember the food pantry sponsored by the Methodist Church. And then November 13th, um, we celebrated Barbara Walter's birthday. So like I say, if you haven't wished her a happy birthday, wish her one. Um, a belated happy birthday. Um, in our prayer list, um, in the bulletin, Marianne Edwards, Pearl Jackson, Jada Clayton, Karen Clegg, David Warren, Matthew Ward, Mac McMorrow, Shannon and Daryl Britt, Chloe Akers, Janet House, Billy McKenzie, Lyndon Cornelius Hunt, The Frisch Family, Kyle Edwards, Taylor Fields, Ashley Blanks, Freddie McBroom, Lee Stevens, Cynthia McMorrow and family, Ashley and Zaley Emman, Tracy Thomas, and like I say, Tracy's healing up, so we'll move her from prayer list. She's requested to do that. Um, Paulette Faison, BJ Norris, Susan Warren, um, surgery went well, but she's healing and asks we continue to pray while she heals. Tommy Eford, Rosemary Taylor, Louise Ron Rising, Melody Oakley, Jennifer Milligan, Sheila Milligan, Hunter Kinlaw, um, continue to go through all of his cancer treatments. Miranda Hines, um, They've called in hospice there. Um, we know God can intervene, um, but keep your prayers going up for Miranda. Michael Davis, Jim Miss Kelly, um, pray for that family. Um, as you know, not only is there an illness there, but also a salvation that's needed. So praying for salvation there too. Um, remember the family of Dan Beard, remember Mary and her family with the passing of Dan. Um, the school systems, pulpit committee, our church and the lost, nation, its leaders, troops and their families, police officers, and then the pastors and their families. Then also, um, in addition to this, um, 
Mac McMurrow, like I say, I should have mentioned earlier, he, he got a bad report. Um, his foot's not healing. Um, so some consequences of that if it doesn't start healing. So keep Mac in prayer. Um, remember the twins, Amelia and Avery Seeley, um, RSV, um, less than one year old. Um, Praise by Avery Jones. AJ Laster has been on a prayer list. Um, he had that fall and was knocked unconscious and never regained consciousness. And I understand that he has passed. So remember that family, the family of AJ Laster as he's passed. Um, remember Jennifer's mother, Bonnie. Um, she's now having to do dialysis. Um, Lacey Hill, which is Mabel's cousin, is not doing well. Um, also remember the family of Michelle Simmons. Um, had a seizure and died, leaves behind two children. She was just 34 years old. Um, Shauna Jackson um, shared a praise that her mother, they had told her she had had cancer. She went in and had a five pound tumor removed and they found no cancer. So just a praise there. Um, Penny Holloman is battling lung cancer. Um, this is her second go around with it. So continue to pray for her. Um, then we had a preemie on our prayer list and got an update, Sadie Godwin. Um, she has tripled her birth weight. Um, so now she is right at 10 pounds. So she has made excellent progress there. So just continue um, to pray for her. Um, BJ has COVID. Um, and then David and Connie have special request and understanding that they're giving praise that they did get um, an answer to that special request. So continue to pray for them as they go through that. Um, the Sinclair family, remember them. So like I say, a lot of different things going on. Um, a lot of people being affected. Um, so like I say, be in prayer for all those families and everything. Um, before we get um, to um, our prayers, I didn't forget one announcement was laying underneath of my bulletin. Um, First Baptist Church is hosting on November 30th at 6.30 a um, Christmas concert and it is by the second time around band so if you like concert music um, I can see in here it's got the trombones and trumpets and saxes and um, so like I say different instruments there if you like concert they'll be having that for Christmas time to get if you need some help getting in the Christmas spirit um, so we'll have that available if you need to get into that with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. And Father, we just give you the praise. And Father, we just thank you for your many blessings. And Father, we know that you're with us. And Father, sometimes the world wants to tell you so you're not. And sometimes the world wants to just shove you out of our mind. But Father, let us hold on to you. And Father, we just ask that you be with these families. Father, we listed several families who have lost loved ones recently. It's never easy to be separated from a loved one. And Father, we just pray for the families that are, le are here with us, or are left behind, as some would say. Father, bless them. Help them through their time of grief. It's not a day, it's not three days, as some would say. No, it goes on for weeks, and sometimes it's, it comes rushing back in when you least expect it. And Father, we just pray that they'll be comforted. And Father, use us to help them if, if there's any way that we can. Bless them, Lord. And Father, we have several on our prayer list that are battling cancer. And Father, we know that the cancer can be beat because you've beat it in so many people's lives around us. And Father, there's several within our church that give testimony of how you brought them through cancer. And Father, we're praying for these individuals who are now battling cancer. Lord, bless them. Heal their bodies, Lord. And Father, we've had, we got several babies on our prayer list that have grown and getting stronger and bigger. And Father, we just give you the praise for those and ask that you just continue to bless them. And Father, we have a pair of twins that are battling with that RSV virus. And Father, just strengthen them because that can be a nasty virus. Bless those babies, Lord. And Father, we pray for our children. We pray for the children of the church and we pray for the children in their schools. May our schools be places of learning, of growing, maturing, 
<clears throat> let them not be areas of danger and disease and violence. Father, bless our schools. May our children increase in wisdom and knowledge as they attend there. And Father, we pray for those on our prayer list that are awaiting results or have had recent procedures and are in need of healing and others who have had recent surgeries and are in our healing. Father, we just pray that you'll bless each and every one of them, Lord. Those who are awaiting results, Lord, we just pray that you'll give them the patience. For it's hard to wait. It's hard to wait for an answer. Bless them, Lord. And Father, we know that you're with them. No matter what the outcome is, you're going to be with them, Lord. You're not going to abandon them. Father, we pray for good results. And Father, we give praise for those who have heard good results recently. And Father, we just praise you. You know, sometimes the devil wants to make us think it's so much worse. And then you show us how much lighter the load can be. Father, we just give you the praise. And Father, we just pray that you'll be with those. And all that have recently had these surgeries. And Father, we give you praise for the healing that we've seen taking place. And the recoveries that are taking place. It's good things. And sometimes we need to make sure that we emphasize the praise. And Father, we pray for our world. Father, there's those who want to make war, those who are making war, and those who are the victims of war. Father, we just pray that there can be peace in our world. We pray that nobody else wants to make war. We pray that they'll not start another war. And Father, today there's reports coming out of Poland that missile strikes that were aimed at Ukraine have gone astray and hit into Poland and killed two people. And that possibly could bring an escalation to this war. And Father, we just need a de-escalation, a quieting, a peacening. Father, we just pray for peace. We pray for the killing to stop. And Father, we pray. We pray for our own nation. As we continue to battle with each other, we need to stop fighting with each other, but work together. Father, you blessed us with a great nation. May we not be selfish about it. May we not take it for granted, but may we recognize who it comes from. Father, make our nation great. Strengthen us as a people. Humble us that we'll bow our head to you, Lord. And recognize that you are the true strength of this nation. Bless us and watch over us, Father. And Father, we pray. We pray for all our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers, ambulance, paramedics, the list goes on, Lord. Bless them and keep them, Lord. For we continue to hear the siren go off in our community, and that tells us that someone is in need of help. And Father, we know with the massive amount of construction that is beginning in our area and going to continue for several years, we know that that also brings an increased risk. And Father, we just pray that it'll be safe. And Father, we're in the holiday season. Many of us will be traveling to and fro to see families and friends. And Father, we just pray everyone will have safe travels. And I pray that as we're out on the highways, that everybody will be calm and that everybody can arrive there safely. No one has to get hurt. And no one gets an extreme rush and causes someone harm. Father, bless the churches. May we proclaim Jesus. May we give him the glory to everyone around us. That they may want to come and hear and listen and find Jesus too. 
Father, bless this Bible study and bless this time. May all things be to your glory. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. If you will, make sure you're in your book of Micah. Um, this is the eighth part of our study. Um, we're in chapter 7. Um, and last time we were working our way through the third message that Micah had stated. Um, and there's several things that he had stated. And one of the key was, is who can you trust? That's how we ended last time. Who can you trust? Because remember last time we were talking about the merchants were cheating their customers and taking advantage of the poor. Um, their scales were wrong, cheating weights. Um, and God was coming down on them pretty hard because they're taking advantage of the poor. Remember, we're supposed to protect the poor and keep the poor safe and, and help them up. We're not supposed to push them down and exploit them and take advantage of them. And then Micah also was talking about even the common people couldn't be trusted. That the social structure of society was falling apart. The family unit was falling apart. And so many things were happening. So from there we got to the question is, well, if I can't trust the merchants, I can't trust the, you know, the people in society. I can't trust even into the family unit. Who can I trust? Wow. Wow. Sound familiar? Sounds like this is in our society. It's permeating our society as well, right? Maybe it's not unfair scales, although it could be. And maybe it could be a measuring of different things. One thing I notice is everything, the price goes up and the packaging gets smaller. I mean, I noticed this one, you know, I used to joke about it. Um, with Karen, when the kids were growing up, we were in diapers. It seemed like every time we turned around, every few months, you know, there was... Three less diapers and a dollar more expensive, and it always said new and improved. I didn't see anything wrong with the previous ones. Why they have to get mess with them and make them more expensive, you know? And you know, I was buying dog food last night, and they didn't even have new and improved on it. Just had four less pounds in the bag, and it looked like the same bag. They just put four less pounds in it and raised it two dollars. I'm like, why? You know, is it unfair business? Is they cheating us? Is inflation that bad? It's hard to tell. It's hard for us to trust. We're, we're you know, cautious and all about large corporations and insurance companies and all these different things. We get very apprehensive and nervous about them because we don't know if we can trust them. And you talk to different people and they can't even trust people in their own families because of issues, because of, you know, it could be drugs, it could be drunkenness, or it just could be that some people in their family just can't be trusted. The family unit's been attacked as well. Oddly enough, the answer for where to put your trust in Micah's day is the same answer where we need to put our trust today. For where we left off last time is straight where we're going to start tonight and then get into this conversation and others. And Micah 7, 7 says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Micah knows where he's going for his trust. He's going to the Lord. And this prophet Micah has reached a turning point. And oh, he's looking away from the sins of the people and so should we and he's meditating on the faithfulness of God. Sometimes we can get so critical of all the sin around us that we let it distract us. I'm not saying that we should, you know, ignore sin or that we should, you know, tolerate. It. That's not what I'm saying, but sometimes we get so overwhelmed by it. That we allow it to affect us that we ourselves are not meditating and focusing on God's word and living it and being faithful to God. We're so worried about everything else we leave God out. And scripture tells us, but as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for my God, my Savior, my God will hear me. That's how the New International 
translates the verse we just read. You read it again. But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Are you waiting for God? Are you knowing that he's going to hear you? Now he says that he would watch and pray to put his trust only in the Lord. Should we not be doing the same thing, watching and praying? But too many times we try to do it our way and we leave God out entirely. That's what happens with a lot of Christians. Oh, when we don't get the answer, it doesn't happen the way we want. We all of a sudden say, well, I got this. I handle this. We don't go to God. We don't ask what we should ask. Now, I'm not telling you when you have an issue that you stop everything and wait on God. I'm not saying that because I think a lot of Christians have obviously got an issue in their life that they've stopped on. They've stopped and watched them for the Lord and they quit doing anything. Oh, I'm, I've got an issue in my way, you know, life. I'm waiting on the Lord. And, and then they're waiting on the Lord. They've totally stopped. They're not doing anything. No, you watch and pray on that issue on that issue. But the other things of your Christian walk you need to continue to do. We need to plow ahead with doing the right things. We need to plow ahead with you know witnessing and ministering and doing these other things. The Lord says never grow tired of doing good. But some people get all wrapped up in their situation, they stop and, and they'll claim they're waiting for God, or maybe they are waiting for God, and they stop doing anything. And that can take you away from God and rather than bringing you near to hear his answer. So continue to do good. Continue to do the things of the kingdom and bring yourself closer to God and his will and it will be easier for you to listen and to hear him. In this last section of Micah 3, or excuse me, Micah's third message, there are three voices. To me, three is all right here together. I'm getting tied up in them right third message three voices and there's three voices that we're going to hear spoke in this last section of scripture that we're going to cover this evening we're going to hear the voice of the nation in verses 8 and 10 and then we're going to hear the voice of the prophet twice and then we're going to hear you know then we're going to hear the voice of the lord and we're going to realize that micah is looking down through the centuries with prophetic vision He's not looking at the events of his day. He's looking on out there for prophetic vision. This is where God's showing him prophecy of later times. And we'll see that he'll talk of Israel coming through a great tribulation, which some refer to as dress rehearsals. But the future will bring God's people, excuse me, the, the future will bring God's people to victory, not defeat. And it's going to happen when God fulfills his promises and his, his prophecies and all that he establishes the kingdom. So let's listen to the first voice. And this is the voice of the nation, verses 8 through 10. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Now, some are talking about is, you know, is Micah speaking on behalf of maybe a remnant as he expresses their faith and courage? And it could be. And all one of the things that happens, and we all know this, is that the enemy will gloat over those that have been defeated. And the Jewish nation has been defeated several times. Um, the Syrians, the Babylonians, you know, you can go through the Philistines and all the different ones that have attacked them over the years. You know, all the way up into the modern times where Israel was, you know, gone. It wasn't even a nation. But then what? It was reestablished in 1948 and it has been a scourge 
for a lot of people. They just can't stand that Israel exists again. And primarily, it's the Muslim nations that have problem with. They won't even show them on their maps. But God has established Israel again, and this is just the front end of it. He truly hasn't established the faithful of Israel because there's a great amount of people in Israel that do not believe in God. They definitely haven't accepted Jesus as their Savior. So God has a great work that's yet to be done in Israel. But in what is being talked to here about Micah, he's not talking about the Assyrians or the Babylonians and all. But he's talking about a future time. And, and according to Jew, Jesus, even the Jewish nation will experience great tribulation, become a target of the Gentile nations in the end. And that's over in Matthew 24, if you want to go through and read that, the second half of the chapter, 15 through 31. It talks about, Jesus is talking about what will happen to Israel in the end times. However, in the end, remember, Christ will return and give his people great victory. Those who call on the Lord will experience a great victory. Those who never call on the Lord, who are never saved by him, will not. So just because Israel is God's chosen people does not mean that they will all be saved. Because if they don't call on Jesus to be saved, they won't be. Now, let's hear what Micah has to say in verses 11 through 14 as he speaks of himself, the voice of the prophet. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortress, even to the river and from the sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. Now, Micah speaks to the city of Jerusalem and assures her that though she had been attacked and destroyed, she would be rebuilt one day. And we know that's true, um, as the remnant comes back out of Babylon. And then speaks in glowing terms of Israel having a new city and temple. And this is talked about over in Isaiah and Ezekiel, if you want to go back and study some of them, what we've already had. And it's not only that, but also the boundaries of the nation will be expanded and include more ter territory than she had before. And all that I have studied, and go back and listening to what God had promised Abraham and promised in the covenant about what the land Israel would possess, never have they fully possessed, to my understanding, the full inheritance from God. Before they got to the end and inherited everything and all and expanded their territory, they sinned against God and these things began to happen and we go through the book of Judges and Kings and all the different things you can go through and all. But never to my knowledge has Israel possessed all of the land that it was supposed to possess. However, in the future, its land will be expanded and it will possess. So in the light of this great promise, the prophet lifted up his heart to the Lord in prayer, and he asked him to be the faithful shepherd. That's what's talking about in verse 14. Be the faithful shepherd of Israel and care for his people. Micah saying, I long for the good old days when the land was fruitful and peaceful and the people were obedient sheep who followed the shepherd. Oh, we'd like to see those things, but our day will never occur that way. No. More things can happen, and more things can you know, be moved. But do you want to get old days? Every day we go backward just takes us a day further away from the coming of the Lord. And people talk about the good old days. Oh, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. But you didn't have a lot of the other things that a lot of you would take for you know granted today I mean, you go back too far and you didn't have air conditioning how many people today are willing to give up air conditioning in these summers when we get into august and it's up over 100 how many people are willing to give up their washing machine or their dryer how many people are willing to give up their dishwasher you know depending, how far back are you going in these good old days 
And all these are just things, but we have grown accustomed to them. I only know of one lady, and I, she's a beautiful lady at heart. And she told me she would not mind going back to doing laundry in the creek on a scrubbing board and a rock. She said, my clothes were cleaner in those days. I thought, wow, what a sight. And uh, she'd rather do things the old-fashioned, by hand way, than a lot of the newfangled ways. Don't meet many people like that. The good old days wouldn't bother her a bit. But what really Micah is screaming for, or asking God for, is that the people will listen to him again like they had before. That the people would obey God like they had before. Now in verse 15 we have one verse where we hear the voice of the Lord. In verse 15 it says, According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. What is God talking about? God replied to Micah and assured him that he would indeed watch over his flock and care for him just as he had when they had departed the land of Egypt. The Exodus, right? And this Exodus image is sometimes used in the scriptures to point to the Exodus of the Jews at the end times of the various nations that they live in today as they return to their own land. And we've seen a great many people of Jews, you know, the of Jewish lineage already doing that. There's a great deal of it. You'll hear from more time to time on the land how, on Israel and how many people have returned to Israel. In this, God will perform great wonders for his people at this time in their history. And the nations will be united against them. Well, there's always, there's already a group of nations that are united against Israel. I can tell you that right now. There's a lot of them that don't want anything to do with Israel. Excuse me. And, of course, that's the Arab nations that are under um, strict Muslim law. Some is Arab nations are warm, but there is a core group that is against them. And probably leading the way is Iran. There are some other nations that don't have much use for them. Um, so, like I say, this will just grow. Let me just put it that way. This list of people who are against Israel will just grow. And when it does, God's going to show them great things. All right. So let's look on again. Again, we have the voice of the prophet in verses 16 through 20. The nation shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth and their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth, and they shall be afraid of the Lord our God, and shall fear because of thee. Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will return again, he will have compassion upon us, he will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth of Jacob and the mercy of Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from days of old. Now, when Israel, and I think a lot of people forget this or just miss it in the detail. When Israel departed from Egypt and God opened up the sea, remember the parting of the Red Sea, not the parting of the Sea of Reeds as some scholars will put it I firmly believe it was the parting of the Red Sea and they crossed over on dry land and then Israel Pharaoh's army followed in on the chariots and before they could get across God released the waters and it drowned the enemy into the mud and waters That event did not go unnoticed. That event did not go unnoticed because the people around them, 
Remember, you have millions of people traveling up out of Egypt. Now, the Israel is a nation born, and it's numbers into the millions, depending on which one. Some say 2.5. Some say as high as 5. You know, others try to be conservative and say less than 1. But I think by the time you count it, you're going to be probably in the low millions. And they're marching out of Egypt. The waters of the Red Sea part, and they cross over on dry land, and then they consume Pharaoh and his army. Other nations heard it and were scared. They were scared. This group of slaves who did not know how to fight, who did not have the weapons, who did not have what they needed to conduct war, nations were afraid of them. Wow. That's a scary thought. Nations are afraid of a bunch of slaves. Wow. And the thing of this is that God is going to show great wonders for the people of Israel again. And because of that, when the Gentile nations see the power of God displayed this time, they won't come up and be against Israel as enemies, but they're going to come out of their hiding places and they're going to bow down to God. And in the end, Israel will have total victory. And remember, the most important event will not be Israel's victory over enemies, but God's victory over Israel. The prophet was confident of the unchanging character of God. God, who is like you in Micah you know, 718, reminds us of the meaning of Michael's name, which goes hand in hand with this. Who is like the Lord? You know, God, who is God, a God like you? And then who is like the Lord? It, it kind of goes together, right? You see that? And God is a God that pardons sin, forgives transgressions, delights in showing mercy. He shows compassion to a people and deals with their sins with finality. Doesn't keep bringing them up. Once they're dealt with, they're done with. Isn't it amazing? The God that we serve. I think we forget that sometimes. But Micah knew God would not go back on his promises. He would not break his covenants and his agreements with the people. Micah also knew that the people weren't always true to Jehovah. But he'll be true to his people. And I think that's true of Christians today. Sometimes we're not always faithful to God, but God's faithful to us. And what God promised to Abraham, the father of the nation, he will fulfill to his descendants. Micah could have sung that song, right? How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. Do you have a firm foundation? And is it laid in the faith in his excellent word? See, in the coming of Jesus Christ in this world, God fulfilled some of the promises he had made to the Jews, and he will fulfill the rest of his promises as well. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Jesus. And that's brought out in 2 Corinthians. If God has made the promise, he's going to bring them through if he hasn't fulfilled them already. And in this, it's interesting that the commentaries talk about the latter part of Micah in the verses 7, 8, 7, chapter 7, 18 through 20. So it has so much theology in it. That in this, we see the reflection of what God told Moses on the mount. We understand the character of God, the more that we trust him for the future, right? The better we know the promises and covenants of God, the more the peace that we can have in our hearts. If you know what God's got for, prepared for you, if you know the promises of God, why are you fretting about the future? But a lot of people are. 
And Micah, he wrote this confession of his faith. The future seemed hopeless, yet he had hope because he knew God and fully trusted him. Look around us. This world looks awful bleak. It looks dark at times. But it doesn't mean that we should be hopeless or see that things can't change. But we need to put our faith in God and our hope is in him and fully trust him. No matter how dark the day, the light of God's promises still shine. No matter how confusing and frightening our circumstances, the character of God remains the same. He's not going to leave you or forsake you. You have every reason to trust God. But so many Christians struggle to relate to the covenants and prophecies because of their faith. It wavers. And it's one, because they don't understand God's word. They don't spend enough time in it. But they look at these things not as real, but as history, as discussion, as stories. And if that's your case, if you're struggling to you know, grasp hold on the covenants and the prophecies, then grasp hold of your own situation. How many times has God blessed you? How many times has God brought you through? Count your blessings. Anchor on them the things that God has done for you. And know that he'll do again whatever he needs to for you because he loves you. With all that the Lord has done for you, do not let doubt creep in and say God won't help you. So I'll encourage you to spend time in the word and see and read the proof documented over thousands of years of promises and covenants. Maybe you can grasp hold of those things and that'll help anchor you. And I want to also... You know, the things that God has promised that are coming to be and will be coming to be as we come into the future. But also spend time reading God's words of promises that are yet to be fulfilled or the promises he makes unto us as Christians, as believers in Christ. And then believe them. Because if God's made the promise, he will keep them. Do not waver. Be strong in the Lord. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Bless us, Lord, in all that we do. Father, let us hold on to you. Let us hold on to your promises, your prophecies. Let us hold on to your word. That we will not waver. That we will be strong in you, Lord. Bless us and keep us. Father, may us bless the church and it may grow. That may grow in spirit, but also in size. May families come. May we minister to them as you lead us, Lord. That we can grow once again. Strengthen us and keep us, Lord. For it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless and have a good night.